uh, people can come and, and, and an act of you know surrender, give requests, needs uh, to God. Um, I grew up going to Catholic church and uh, Catholic school, and uh, when you walk into the church, you, you before you go into the pew, you genuflect, and, and it's acknowledging as you kneel, you know, they're, they're acknowledging that God is God and you're not. And so we we don't do that when we go into the chairs, but it's a pretty similar thing. Sometimes when we pray, we come and we just kneel before God and acknowledge that He is God, that He is the one that we, we serve, that He is the one that we honor and not ourselves. So if you have a need or request you want to bring before Him, the altar is open.
video that we're going to watch right now. So if you put uh, put your attention over to the screen. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Since the beginning of time, God and man used the eagle as a symbol of royalty, power, victory, authority, and valor. Its strength and courage has inspired men throughout the ages. In the golden days of Greece, the eagle was a symbol of victory and supreme spiritual energy. The Greeks represented the eagle with wings outstretched, holding a serpent in its claws. Thus, the eagle represented the triumph of good over evil. The Romans saw the eagle as the symbol of victory. As the Roman legions conquered the world, they marched under the standard of the eagle with outstretched wings. The silver eagle was the symbol of the Republic. The Roman Empire used the golden eagle as its symbol. The eagle was the personal emblem of the Caesars, thus representing supreme authority. The rise of Christianity brought the eagle still more honor. To the early Christians, the eagle was the symbol of ascension due to its biblical references, its powerful flight, and its gaze, which often seemed fixed upon the heavens. On June 20th, 1782, the eagle became the symbol of a new country. Because of the eagle's courage, beauty, and majesty, it was chosen to symbolize the United States of America. It is now a prominent aspect of the government of the president, vice president, several members of the president's cabinet, and most branches of the military. Additionally, several states have the eagle on their state flags, and you can still find an eagle on American currency. Finally, the crew of Apollo 11 chose Eagle as the name for the lunar module which was to make history with the words of Eagle Scout Neil Armstrong. Houston, Tranquility Base here. The eagle has landed. With those words, the world knew that man achieved the impossible, touching the moon. With the words of the prophet Isaiah to the emblem of this country, the eagle has a part in the most momentous achievements of man. As a result, in 1911, following the traditions as old as man himself, Boy Scouts of America chose the eagle to symbolize the very highest in achievement. Through all of history, the eagle has been the symbol of man's best. It also serves as a symbol for boys who have soared to scouting's highest heights. The rank of eagle scout. That's pretty amazing. Um, when you think about the eagle and all that it uh, the different places throughout history that has been used and now moving up to the Boy Scouts of America utilizing it to give the greatest, the highest award for the person that has went through Cub Scouts and Weeblos and Boy Scouts and uh, to achieve the rank of Eagle Scout is a huge honor. Uh, are there Eagle Scouts here this morning that you, you know, would you stand up if you're an Eagle Scout this morning? Just left me. 
Thank you, Zachary Pace uh, built uh, an observation deck out there, and then Jonathan here has gone and he uh, put some steps and did a pathway up there uh, that was very sturdy, and it, it makes it very uh, nice for people to be able to walk up there without tracking through the mud or anything like that. And uh, we here at the church, we have appreciated uh, Jonathan. I remember Jonathan years ago, he went with me to kids camp as a child, and he is just as outgoing now as he was then, uh, and yeah, he's kind of a shy guy. Uh, anyway, but uh, I, I really greatly admire and appreciate his hard work, his diligence towards working through, because generally, you know, what happens is you go through Cub Scouts and you transition over to Boy Scouts and you kind of uh, get caught up into everything else and you there's only a small percentage of those that go into Boy Scouts uh, that achieve the rank of Eagle Scout and I'm excited about uh, Jonathan having done that and we have a, uh, a plaque that we have put together that says in grateful appreciation Jonathan Wingfield for your dedication, hard work, and contribution of your Eagle Scout project at 418 Pin Forest Worship Center 2014, because this is the year, even though you did it last year. And I want to present this to you and say thank you so much for all your work. Congratulations if you received that rank of Eagle Scout. God bless. Thank you. And then another young man who I've known for a few years through scouting is Alex Jeffers. And, and for whatever reason, Alex has been the one that's had to do the call, the call to worship or responsive reading the past couple of years. And uh, so he has completed his Eagle Scout project as well here at the church. There is uh, out in, by our playground that is kind of getting a facelift. He, he was responsible for building this uh, picnic pavilion out there that uh, once spring comes, we'll get some mulch under it and finish things up out there. But uh, he has uh, built that. It's pretty sturdy, and it's a place that parents can be able to come and sit. If they don't want to sit on the observation deck, they can come and sit under there and watch their kids uh, on the swings or watch them play uh, volleyball in a place that uh, small parties could come together and have a party together out there. And uh, Would you come up here at this time, Alex? And... Alex had, uh, worked also for many, many hours, and, uh, and he worked out there in the what, snow and rain and <laughs> everything, uh, and they had to, they dug the holes for the footings for the, or uh, not footings, but to put the post in, and, and then they, got, they had to be inspected. Well, while they were waiting for the inspector to come, it rained, and it rained a bunch. And they had to go and, and, and pull buckets of water out of it so that the, they could come and inspect it from the county and give them the green light to go ahead and build it. And there are some pumpkin beams that are out there. So uh, anyway, he worked hard. And it's been neat to see Alex as he's growing up and uh, matured. And uh, his plaque says the same thing for your dedication, hard work, and contribution your, to, of your Eagle Scout project, Troop 418, Pin Force Worship Center 2014. On behalf of Pin Force Worship Center and, and myself, thank you so much for your hard work as well. That's a, that's a huge uh, thing to aspire to, and, and I, I appreciate Because uh, usually when they turn 16, what, what is it? Um, uh, jobs, girls, and some perfume, perfume and gasoline. Those are the two things that distract them from getting their Eagle Scout projects. But uh, our 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 uh, Boy Scout leader is Michael Minton, and he's also uh, working with the venturing venturing group here at the church. And so, Michael, would you come up here? I'm going to have him share just a little bit about uh, what's going on with uh, the Boy Scouts because I really appreciate. Uh, them as well and all that they do. Thank you. Uh, well, first off, we appreciate you guys letting us be here. Uh, the use of the church facilities means a lot to us. But we've had an amazing year this year. Uh, we've gone to a lot of camp outs. I don't want to list all of them, but we had uh, a winter camp out here recently at Mr. Lynch's place. Nobody actually froze to death, but everybody <laughs> was pretty cold. Um, we climbed the top of Devil Marble Yard, climbing all the boulders. 
at our fall camporee, uh, we took second and third place in a lot of the events that were there. Boys did real well. We camped over the summer at Camp Powhatan. Uh, even had some boys staff with us at Gold Rush. Uh, back in about this time last year, we had uh, the Klondike Derby, which the boys actually took first place overall in the Klondike Derby. Uh, we Alex Jeffers was leading them as uh, senior patrol leader for that event, and they did a really, well, a really good job. We hiked Peaks of Otter and visited the B-25 crash site. Did anybody know there's a B-25? Parts of it still up there on uh, Shark Top. Well, the boys went up, we visited that uh, crash site. A um, couple of things I wanted to mention. We had two boys who were inducted into the OA, the Order of the Arrow. Uh, the Order of the Arrow is uh, the Boy Scouts National Honor Society. Um, we had three gentlemen earn their Eagle Scout, and then we've got two others who are awaiting their uh, Eagle Board reviews. Uh, I don't see Mr. Murphy here. I was going to thank him. He's our Eagle coach, and he does a lot. Up north. He's up north. He does a lot to make that happen. It takes a lot to become an Eagle Scout. Eagle Scouts, you know, they've got so many different achievements that they have to earn. And there's so many things that distract them. And the Eagle Scout will follow them, not just while they're in scouting, but after they are out of scouting all through their life, because it shows the dedication that it takes you know, with all the other distractions to put the effort into achieving one goal. And that, mean, that means a lot to a lot of people. Uh, about scouting, one thing, and you took a lot of my steam. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the, there's three parts of the scout code, which we had that before, which was duty to God, a scout's reverend, duty to country in the projects that we do for uh, Eagle Scout service projects we do, and duty to self, um, keeping yourself physically strong, morally straight. Uh, that way you are actually able to complete the rest of uh, your duties. Um, the boys have, you know, I said they've done a lot this year. We've had a lot of fun. It's not all about having fun. It's about service. Uh, the OA, as I mentioned before, was not only uh, those who love camping, but brotherhood of cheerful service. So it's all about serving others. Uh, mentioning the, the venture crew, uh, we are actually starting a venture crew here at the church. Uh, venture crew, if, if anybody doesn't know what a venture crew is, it is a co-ed version of scouting. Uh, boys and girls uh, get to go into some, you know, some more high adventure stuff than some of the Boy Scouts get to do. And I'm really excited about that. We've had a couple, we've had a couple of events. They actually went to the Dells Morgan Yard with us. A few of them did anyway. Uh, and we're trying to put together activities for them. If anybody's interested in uh, joining, uh, we're definitely looking for more members for the adventure crew, more activities. Uh, and like I said, it, it's an exciting opportunity that we have here with the church. So we're looking forward to that. And thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it, Mike. When we stepped in a couple years ago, things we went through several transitions with, with different leaders, and Michael has stepped up and stepped in. And I, I appreciate the consistency, the continuity, uh, all those other words that I could put with that is. He has worked hard, and we're seeing the Boy Scout troop grow uh, again as well, and I'm excited about that. And uh, we have uh, a book that we're going to give to all the leaders of the Boy Scouts, uh, but I'll get your, from you later their names, but uh, I have a book for you. It's called, entitled Home Run. This is a book that's hot off the press, like just two weeks ago. It's by John Maxwell and Kevin Myers. It's about uh, leadership, for, uh, game plan for life and leadership, and it's a, if you've heard of John Maxwell, he's a big leadership guru, and Kevin Myers is a pastor of a church that is growing dramatically. It's a Wesleyan church down in Atlanta, Georgia, runs 12,000 people, uh, and he and John Maxwell came together and wrote this book talking about home run, and I just want to present this to you and say thank you so much for all that you do. This is just a small token of, to say thank you for who you are and what you're doing at the scout. At the scout. God bless you. We have not only the Boy Scouts here, but we have Cub Scouts. And 
I have something I want to say, but I'm not going to say it because I'm, I, then I would be stealing Kevin's thunder. So Kevin, come up. I, I'm learning. I'm learning. Kevin, would you come up? Uh, when the Cub Scouts came here about 11 years ago now, I believe it is, maybe 12, there was just uh, about 15 uh, children that were involved in Cub Scouting. And it has grown dramatically. And I appreciate uh, the leadership that Kevin has uh, and the team that you have surrounded yourself with uh, and what Cub Scouting is doing here at the church. And so I'm going to give the microphone to you so I don't say something that you were going to say. Thank you, Mark. Um, <clears throat> before I say anything, I, I try to take every opportunity that I can find to say thank you to Mike Minton. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for Mike giving me the opportunity to uh, help lead in Cub Scouts about four years ago. So thanks again, Mike. Um, I've had the privilege of leading for uh, the past three years, um, and it's very rewarding. Um, we have a great group of kids and, and parents and awesome leaders. Um, I have some good news to share. Um, you as a, a, a church, you have reason to celebrate. Um, your scouting ministry continues to be a huge success, and um, we, we appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Um, there's a, a point in the scout law that says the pack helps the Cub Scout grow. Well, grow we have. Um, last year we had about 30 scouts um, when we uh, spoke at this uh, same uh, Scout Sunday. Uh, this year we have 50 and in the last two weeks, we just added two more. So we continue to grow. Um, some of you may be familiar with the name Lord Baden Powell. Uh, he is the gentleman who founded the scouting movement in, uh, in the UK in the early 1900s and was instrumental in bringing it to the United States. Um, a quote from him, he said, Scouting is nothing less than applied Christianity. And our Christian teachings tell us to, to spread the word, and you guys do that with your scouting ministry. Um, you couldn't be more uh, true to what Lord Baden Powell says there. Um, he also has a, a, a quote that says, No man is much good unless he believes in God and obeys his laws. So every scout should have a religion. Religion seems a very simple thing. First, love and serve. And second, love and serve your neighbor. This year we brought back uh, a program to um, scouting. It's called the Pray Program. Uh, it's actually uh, separate from scouting, but it's something that um, many uh, scout packs are able to do. Um, the goal of the Pray Program is to foster the Christian growth of children, youth, and their families. Um, the two programs that we were able to do this year, thanks to Pastor Myron and Pastor Darren, we did God and Me, and we had God and Family, and this program is open to the scouts and their siblings, and we had uh, 60 kids that completed that program this year. I, I mentioned uh, our leaders. Um, we're really blessed this year. Um, we have uh, some great new leaders, uh, people who are coming from your congregation to help the ministry, and we really appreciate, um, the Maribels aren't here this morning, but um, we appreciate them, Blake, and um, of course, uh, Nana Fran and Lori, who will support us with uh, uh, all kinds of things in the background, uh, certainly Paul um, and Sarah, if I miss anybody, um, I 
promise I'll catch you up shortly. Um, yeah, Tom, Tom Fitzpatrick, um, Brian Bowden, um, and uh, so we're really happy with the, the leaders that we have this year. Um, we, um, we earned uh, an award that's called Journey to Excellence. We earned the gold standard um, for this year. It's the first time that uh, that award's been earned for the PAC in probably about five years. And um, that's the highest that a PAC or a unit can earn. It, uh, it measures you in about uh, 13, 40 different achievements in 13 categories. And um, I want to thank Blake Moran for helping us get through all the paperwork and, and uh, earning Journey to Excellence goal. Um, we've had really strong participation in um, our council events at, at our fall camporee. We had over 90 people there and we had about 83 who spent the night, a, a cold night, and um, we had a great show. And we, we right, right now we are the second largest pack in our district. 